Hi everyone, today I'm going to share a little secret with you that I discovered recently using my Fuji silicon profiling tool to obtain the most fantastic finish when you're corking skirting boards or baseboards. I'm here today in my spare room. My skirting boards are all now installed. But you can probably just see down here I've got a few tiny little gaps between the skirting board and the wall that need to be filled with cork. It doesn't happen everywhere, it's just where the wall is a little bit uneven. So a quick run through of the stuff you'll need and how to get it up and running ready for use. I tend to use this decorator's cork. It's a 380ml canister from Geocell and then you need an applicator gun. I bought this one oh, years ago now from uh, Travis Perkins I think. Whilst you can find applicator guns everywhere this is a really heavy duty one and I would say it's worth spending a bit more money on an applicator gun because I have had a few of the cheaper ones break on me in the past. Full details of the tools I've used today will be in the description at the end of this video. So you've just got a couple more things to do to get up and running. You want to take the nozzle off because the tube is sealed. You want to get a good sharp blade like a Stanley knife or here I've got my Leatherman and just take off the top of the tube and then you can put your nozzle back on and then opinions differ on how much to cut off the nozzle and at what angle to cut it. If any of you have watched my silicon video you will see that I suggest cutting off the nozzle square. It's a good idea to cut the nozzle off square because that way you're forcing the silicon into the joint whereas if you cut the nozzle at a diagonal you're pulling it along the joint and not forcing as much silicon into the gap. Now I'm going to show you how I used to cork the gap between the skirting board and the wall. So I typically squeeze a narrow bead of cork, as narrow bead as possible actually, into the gap like so. And then I'd probably get my finger, you see this on a lot of YouTube videos, I'd get my finger and I'd try and smooth it into the gap. Now I always find this a bit unsatisfactory because you're left with quite a lot of smearing on your wall as you can see here. So typically I then get some sort of decorator's filler knife like this and try and remove as much of the residue as possible like that. But with the best wood in the world you always end up with a little bit on the wall which you sort of accept and you think well you know this is going to happen. I'll just cut, cut it back in and I'll paint the wall and it'll be fine. The other thing you can do in this situation is get a decorator's wipe like these which I bought from Johnston's and then just wipe the wall just to try and remove as much of the cork as you can but actually as I've been talking that cork has started to set and it's created a residue on the wall that I can't remove. So a lot of people would be quite happy with that and then they'd move on to the next part of the joint and that is what I used to do but any of you who have seen my how to silicon the complete pro guide video which is coming up in a link here will have seen that I recently bought one of these Fuji kits and it suddenly occurred to me the other day why don't I use the right angle profile of the Fuji kit to do my corking. That's exactly what I did with pretty amazing results I'm going to show you right now. Now before we start the only thing you've got to remember is which way around to hold the profiling tool. If you buy one of these kits there's a lovely little instruction book that shows you all of this but basically it couldn't be more simple. There's a beveled side and a flat side. The flat side is where your thumb goes. Basically you always want to have the sharp edge pulling across the joint so you leave the beveled edge behind like this. But it doesn't end there because there's also a little tiny tool here which enables you to get into really tricky spots. And at the risk of stating the obvious, obviously in between each corking run press a little clip on the back of the applicator gun because that releases the pressure on the gun and prevents the silicon from squeezing out in between each tooling of the joint. So just the same as before we apply this bead this is a reasonably dark deep gap so I've just forced it as much in as I can there because cork does have a habit of shrinking in the joint so you want to get in as much as you can. So now I've done that you can see I've got quite a heavy bead here on the surface of the skirting board but then take my tool look at that. You do admittedly end up with a little bit of residue cork on your profiling tool but you could actually smooth that onto another part of the joint if you don't want to waste it. 
It's going to go over that joint one more time at a slightly different angle to pick up any residual cork. And right into the corner. And now, just look at that joint. There's no cork left on the wall. You've got a lovely clean line and the cork has literally only deposited itself on the inside of the joints. So there's none on the top of the skirting board and there's none on the wall. Time to do a spot more. I'm going to go with a slightly thinner joint of cork here because it's a much thinner gap. Just effortless. See that I've got a smaller amount of waste cork left on the tool. But for those of you who don't like to have too much waste left over, the brilliant thing about this tool is you can actually reuse the cork. Watch this. I'm literally just going to squidge this all over the wall. What a mess. You're thinking, what a dreadful job. But again, we take the tool and away we go. <laughs> it's just scooped off all the cork off the wall. Isn't that amazing? What I particularly love about this tool is that if you use that method I showed you at the start of using your finger, uh, cork is actually, it is water soluble so you can clean it off your hands with soap and water but whilst you're working it's a really sticky, horrible, messy substance. But by using this tool you simply don't get any cork anywhere. The only thing you've got to do is clean it off the profiling tool in between each run. So as you would have seen in my silicon video, I'm just doing a short run of between 60 and 100 centimetres at a time. And then I'm just scooping off. That run with my profiling tool. And then just cleaning the profiling tool between each run with a bit of tissue paper. The thing about this tool is it's so effective that if you actually angle it too much, so that's 90 degrees, if I was to take it like that, you can actually end up scooping the silicon out of the joint that you just created. So when you apply your silicon and then use the tool, it's important to keep the tool at 90 degrees so that you leave enough silicon in the joint. So that's it everyone, I really hope you found this tip useful. I've just been mulling over whether I can see any downsides to using this tool for uh, corking. And there's only two I can really think of. The first one is, I know I've had a few comments following my last video on siliconing using this tool. Particularly you guys in the United States, Canada, Australia, uh, around the world saying, how come you can get this in the UK for £12, whereas for us it costs $40, $50, $60? Um, that is a real pain. I can't really explain that other than this is made in Germany. And I guess at the moment, at least, um, our trading arrangements with the EU mean that we can get this reasonably cheaply, whereas for you guys it's a lot more expensive. The only thing I would say to you is see if there's an equivalent manufacturer where you can pick up a profiling tool like this, um, hopefully at a fraction of the price that you're being charged for the Fuji. The only other point I've got to say about it is I was trying to work out whether this has actually deteriorated at all, this edge, as a consequence of running it along what is, I suppose, a slightly rougher surface um, wall and a wooden skirting board than you would typically get in, for example, a bathroom or kitchen application where you're profiling tiles. The Fuji is obviously designed for uh, rough tiles as well as smooth tiles, um, so it should be perfectly fine to use it for this. But if I'm going to be totally honest, there is a very slight, can you see that, degradation in the edge of that corner. If you can just see there on that corner, I mean it's almost nothing. And I think this tool is going to give me lots of uh, profiling to come. But there is just a very slight mark on those two corners, 
which I guess has been caused by running it along a, a slightly rougher surface than you would find if you were tiling. So I just thought I'd point that out to you before the video was finished. So, so that's it. Please like the video below if you have found it useful. And if you're new to my channel, I'd love to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here.